of you who don't know me, my name is Jim Kirkpatrick, I'm one of the career coaches here, and uh, I have an industry expert, Greg Gilmore, he's from A&G Healthcare Services, he's VP and IT director there, been there about 10 years, so I'm going to try to take care of you as far as interviewing, I mean I know a lot of you have been on interviews before, and, you know, uh, had successful interviews, had jobs. Uh, but we'll try to help you out here. Maybe some things Greg can tell you that he looks for in um, when he interviews. You know, the type of person he's looking for. Uh, you know, specifically for IT. Uh, so important to go into your interview and kind of have a plan. You know, you need to know about the company that you're going to try to get the job from. It'll do two things. One, it'll impress the people that you're going to interview with. And two, it'll cut down on your nervousness. You know, if you don't prepare, or you, don't, you feel like you don't know all of what you need to know, it, it'll show up. You know? Write down questions. Um, and you, Greg will tell you this when we start talking. You can have questions when you go to your interview. You can have them sitting right in front of you. And have those, but already have practiced those before you get in there. You know... And of course, I guarantee you, you'll have all these questions written out. You know how you're going to answer them, and they're going to ask you something you don't, you didn't have on your list. You know, and, but that's you can't freak out. Just got to roll the punches there and keep going. Dress professionally and with confidence. Now, IT world is a different critter. I mean, you know, you're not going to be going to work in a suit and tie every day. However, though, the interview is a different matter. I mean, you're going to find out the, the company culture in your research or maybe your first five minutes inside the building. But you don't want to show up in, you know, jeans and t-shirt on your interview. And I've seen that before. It doesn't always work out well. Uh, arrive on time, never be late. Some people say 15 minutes is about the right time. Don't get there 30 minutes and then announce, because then you don't know what kind of time schedule that person is on. You, you make them rush. So 15 minutes, never walk. You know, If you have a 12 o'clock interview, 1 o'clock, whatever, don't show up at 12 o'clock for a 12 o'clock interview. That's, you know, you're already going to cut yourself out of that. Um, yeah, a good idea. If, if it's a place you don't know really good, go the day before. Drive around, see where you're going to park, where you're going to get out, where the building is you're going to go into. That'll cut down on all anxiety. You know, so you know exactly where you're going to go and the time you're going to get there. And then the next one, uh, show enthusiasm and be authentic to everyone you encounter, not just your interviewer. Give a, a good first impression. You know, the person in the front. The secretary, the person that you tell that you're here. A lot of times the person, the interviewer, when you leave, they're going to ask, well, how was that person? What do you think of them? Well, if you were a jerk to the, to the secretary, you know, for some reason, I don't know why you would be, but maybe something bad happened, this short will, then uh, it's not going to be very good for you as far as being a finalist. Um, be prepared with extra copies of your resume. References, pen and paper to take notes. Just like I said a while ago, you know, you can have your things. It's okay. People are not going to take off. You know, think bad about you if you have things that you need to refer to. I mean, you can't remember all the questions that you're going to uh, that you want to ask. You, know, you get nervous, you forget. Um, extra copies, even though you might email that person your resume, you still should have extra copies. You don't know. They may want to refer to it, and they can't get to their e email right away. Um, and then also, you know, eating, smoking before you go in, um, not a good idea, you know. And wouldn't be a good idea to go in smacking gum either. That would just, you know, take away from there. Um, some people, we talked about this last night, they said, well, what about having water in front of you? I would not have water, I would not have anything that could spill, you know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. And I, if you have water, it's because they gave it to you. You know, if they said, "Hey, do you want something to drink?" Then that's okay. But 
I don't know many of the interviews that have gone that way, but if they do, you know, that will be okay. Maintain eye contact and remember body language. Okay? The worst thing you can do is look down or look away when you're talking to the person that you're trying to impress. You know, they're not gonna, it's not a very good, they're not gonna see you in a very good light. And they're gonna see that as a, maybe you're not confident in what you're telling them. You know, if you can't look the person in the eye, they're not gonna believe what you say. Listen carefully and answer the question asked. Give specific examples using the STAR method. That situation or task you faced, action you took, and the results achieved. Okay, if you've overcome a problem, you know, people are gonna wanna know how did you solve the problem? You're there to brag on yourself. You want to make sure that person knows, hey, I've had some really tough problems to overcome and, I, and this is how I solved them. And then the, number nine, ask insightful questions back to your interviewer. That goes along with the preparation before the interview. I would have at least four questions about the company. One of those questions should never be, you know, what am I going to make? <laughs> What's the salary? And don't ask about vacation. All that stuff, you know, that's something you, you hope that you get when you get hired. The salary, and we're going to talk about all this stuff, but the salary is something that you need to already kind of research. If you have to ask what the position pays, that tells them that you, number one, it's, it's a bad thing to do, but you don't know, you had not done your research. You know, you don't know what this job pays. Follow up after your interview with a thank you card or an email. First thing I do, as soon as I get back home, I'm shooting that person an email so they don't forget. Remember, I had this, and, I mean, kind of highlight what you talked about, you know. And remember to kind of maybe highlight one or two of your strengths in that thank you email. Because the person you're interviewing with, they may be talking to 20, 30, 40 people. No telling how many people they're going to interview. Bigger companies, it's hard to get noticed. You know, smaller companies have a little bit better of a chance. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to bring uh, Greg Gilmore and uh, have him talk. He's been in the business for a long time, uh, been at AG for 10 years, has some of his own businesses, and uh, I won't tell him, I'll let him tell, tell you how long he's been with computers, but. Uh, I think in, to start out, I'm just going to go through this list, a, in a, you know, with some of my experiences. Um, and I'd like, but I'm going to start out with number three first, um, and then go down the list because this is how I address it work. Um, we had a couple of questions last night that seemed to be a very, people were asking, you know, should I wear a suit? What, what should I wear? Should I be casual? Um, a lot of that has to do with your you know, when you're researching the company. We did have somebody say that they were actually kicked out of an interview because they dressed too good. Because if we don't hire people with suits. That's far and few between. Nobody's ever going to be, from, from what I've seen, nobody's ever been um, uh, discounted for dressing too good. The way I look at it is you get the job and, for example, with our company, um, we, even, we even try to dress business schedule when we're doing the interviews. Because once you get the job offer and in your offer letter, you find out that you can wear flip-flops every day if you want to. You want to be prepared for the industry you're interviewing for. Because when you guys go out and start interviewing, you're not, you may want one discipline. You may <coughs> just want to do C++ for an insurance company. Or you may just want to do Java for a, you know, a web design firm. Um, it, but more than likely, you're going you're gonna to be going to different industries. And it's, it's good to know, you know, at least a little bit about what they do when you get there. Um, and that has to do with research in the company. Um, you're going to find some of the salary things um, that Jim talked about, but um, it's, not all, it's not all black and white. Um, you can get a lot of that information through, through the research, but experience matters. It's probably the most important thing. And regardless of what, what you do from this list, for me, I think the most important thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it first, is communication. Because with what we do, I'm sure those of y'all that have been in the business for a while, and whether you're in the classroom or not, how you, um, how you communicate with the people around you, whether they're IT or not, 
um, is very important, uh, especially in, in our environment um, at a and because we deal with clients, we deal with vendors, we deal with um, you know, sales, we deal with operations, uh, we deal with a lot of different people. And if you're, you're given a problem to solve, which is pretty much what we do, we get a problem, we solve it. Um, nobody, nobody's looking at, at you know, how you solve the problem. You know, they just want to know how, how it's useful to them. Um, and if you start throwing out a bunch of acronyms and you start, um, you know, talking techie to them, it, it turns them off right away. Um, acronyms are good in a, in a resume, um, but I think during the interview, it's best to stay away from them because you never know who you're talking to. Um, if you're talking to an IT guy, that doesn't necessarily mean that he knows, you know, PHP or RAID 5 or anything like that. So, um, in, in our situation, in our company, you might talk to an HR person first before you even get to the IT person. Um, and then after the IT person, you might talk to the CFO. So you have to be real careful with that. There, there have been times at our office where we've had people in the lobby waiting to be interviewed. Um, and, I, and we're HIPAA compliant. We're a medical company for that piece. We actually own the building too, but, and so we have other tenants. But um, our main lobby is we'll have people waiting in there to, um, to be interviewed. And we'll walk, I'll walk through there sometime. I'll say good morning or you know, we'll ask them if they want coffee or water or something like that. And you won't believe the number of times when somebody will have their head in the paper circling jobs and just won't even look up. Or on their phone, won't look up, won't say hello, anything like that. I, I'm not saying it would discount, you know, that it would, it would I would, still wouldn't consider them after talking to them, but it's starting off on the bad foot, on a bad foot. Um, mm -hmm. And especially if, you know, the president of the company walks through there and says hello, because he usually dress worse than me. And, um, <laughs> and he says hello. And, and they don't say anything, you know, because eventually you're going to meet. And we like to make sure that we have the right person. So if, if, some, if somebody walks through and says hello to you, you know, say hello back. That's, that's key because you'd be surprised at how often it doesn't happen. The questions that you ask would be, I, I think some good questions to ask right off the bat would be um, more information about the company. Done your research, you know a little bit about it. Ask, you know, you're going to ask about the position, you're going to talk about the position, and you're going to find out about it, but find out more, a little bit more about the company, maybe two or three questions, not, you know, don't spend the whole interview talking about uh, the company. Um, but um, I would ask about that first, and then maybe you can get into more detail about the position. Um, the number four, arrive on time, never be late. Um, you know, that pretty much goes without saying, and I want to, Jim mentioned it, he touched on it a little bit. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is being nervous. Um, he mentioned something about the water. Um, if, you know, for example, if you want to do everything you can to not be nervous in that interview because it'll show. And if you're thirsty or if you haven't taken your meds or if you, um, you, know, you didn't sleep last night, all of that stuff is, is you know, people could tell when they're interviewing you. Uh, one of the questions we get all the time is, you know, what kind of what kind of questions do you ask? I don't ask a whole lot of questions when I'm doing an interview um, because I can usually tell, you know, how they are communicating, you know, pretty quick. But we do in our industry, we're we're problem solvers, and that's that's the best way to describe it um, for me. Um, and I usually like to know of some kind of problem that you've come up with a solution on. Don't have to get into technical details or anything like that. But it's always nice to have, you know, one scenario or two to share with the uh, um, interviewer. Me personally, or anybody with me, would they're not going to start asking you to to code something right there. Um, yeah, it just it just wouldn't make any sense because you're going to find out the first day whether they can code or not. I always ask, um, what's your plan in ten years? You know. I mean, because we don't mind having a, a, an employee for a year if they're a good employee. Um, but, you know, we, uh, we always like to know, is, is this going to be something that's going to grow with us? And so we always, we, always like, we always like to ask what your plan is. What do you, is there any other thing, part of the company you want to be in? Um, and usually go down your resume a little bit and talk a little bit about the things that you've you've done. Experience is a very important thing, but it's mm -hmm. not the end all be all because yeah. I'll tell you there's we had a guy that worked for us and he was in the he was going to school to be in the seminary. And um, 
but when we never wanted him to leave, he couldn't he couldn't code a lick. He couldn't do. He, but he wanted to start coding because he, he was helping us with some other stuff, and he wanted to start coding. I guarantee you, he he you know six months later he was he was just pushing out some of the best code I've ever seen. So I, you know any language you can put on your resume is is good, but don't be scared if you're not proficient in any particular language from a programming standpoint. Um, when you get into the hardware stuff, you might need a little bit be a little bit more. Um, maybe certified or um, I'm not a big, big hardware guy we gotta we outsource that stuff so a lot of the times people that are just getting into the industry it's a little bit scary you know because uh, one of the one of the things I like to tell the people that we hire is you're not going to know everything right off the bat things change so fast just because this guy learned a new way to thread something on a server so it, you know you can multitask you know in, in a different way it doesn't mean you have to immediately know how he did it um, um, or why didn't you think of it? You, you know, we don't have that kind of mentality because that's why the whole team works together to get those kind of things, you know, you know to get the project uh, finished. Where you, you know, you, you kind of question your, your value to the company because you didn't think of this process or you didn't think of, you know, uh, you didn't have this idea to solve this solution, but somebody else did. But, but it's a team effort. So, and in our industry, uh, if you're the first at everything, none of us would be in this room right now, you know, because you, yeah. it's, there's always something new popping up. But the technology is going to continue to change. I mean, I mean, look at iOS. I mean, it's, where is it at now? Every six months they come out with a new beta or every three months they come out with a new beta. If you're coding like that or, you're, you know, if you're, you, you know, doing the Java stuff, they're always coming out with something new. But our company uses recruiters most of the time. What they do though, is they, they will look at your social media. We're, that's why I try to tell everybody, keep your Facebook locked up. Because if we're looking at Facebook and it's locked up, that's, that's as good as you being, you know, a perfect candidate. Um, because you know to keep your personal stuff locked up and not out there for everybody to see. Now if you're holding a shot of tequila and the clock behind you says 8.30 in the morning, you know, it, it's happened before. We've seen a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, but I would say just, you know, just don't put anything po uh, political, you know, that's, that's kind of iffy. I mean, we're not going to make a decision based on somebody's politics. We never have. We never ask. But people tend to do that on some of the social media sometimes. Um, but in our company, we wouldn't. I can't say that about other companies, um, because especially if you're not being hired by an IT person. I mean, a lot of times they're, you know, people are, are pretty... Pretty, um, um, you know, they, they have pretty strong feelings about their political views, especially nowadays, and we try to stay away from that as much as possible. And you should too, if you're looking for a job. Once you get the job, you know, I, you don't want to do like that person did a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you heard about it, but she got the job and then she got on Facebook and said already, oh, I hate this job, but I got to take it because um, I don't know if you heard about that. And then she ended up getting fired because of it. It was on. It was on the news and radio and everything because they're making a big stink about it. Whether they should have used Facebook or not used Facebook or looked at her Facebook, but uh, um, believe me, people do. Especially the recruiters. The recruiters will, will look at the Facebook and social media um, immediately. Um, you know, they'll because it's their job to make sure we don't have to do a lot of late work. Um, usually. All the resumes will come to me or, or to HR. If it's IT, usually they come to me first, and then, then I'll filter them down to, to, to HR, to who I want it to call. Um, but the recruiters already had them before I've had them, and very seldom have I got a resume that we didn't bring that person in to, um, to interview. Uh, because these recruiters, are there's tons of them out there. Uh, they, they may already be soliciting you guys, because they, they do that a lot too. Um, but they're very, they, they're very thorough in their jobs because they get, I don't know if you'll know this, but they get 30% of whatever you're going to make that first year. So um, they want to make sure that they get good candidates and that the candidates stay there. So I go to LinkedIn. If I don't see a picture on LinkedIn, but I see a pretty good account, then sometimes I'll leave it at that. But if your LinkedIn account is, is new, maybe you're just fixing it up, then I'm going to go to Facebook. Then, if I find on Facebook, I see a bunch of crazy stuff, I'm not submitting that person to him because, you know, 
if I only have four, if he says, send me four good candidates, I'm going to do the best I can because my money, my livelihood is, is based on the people I send over there. If I send him somebody that he's going to say, what is this? Well, then I cut out a chance of making money. And, you know, that person, you might be with one recruiter, but he might be dealing with four or five recruiters. So, you know, everybody's in a competition to get the best people they can there. So that, that's why you want to really be careful with your LinkedIn. And like he said, I, keep your Facebook personal. Don't put, you know, if you have crazy stuff on there, make sure no one else can get into it besides the people you want. Because people will find it. You know, if they're really trying to find out about you, they will find it. And the political stuff, I can tell you this. If somebody sees some stuff on there that you, you know, whatever your political leanings are, you know, maybe it doesn't matter to the recruiter, but it might matter to somebody else higher up in the company. If they just happen to see it, it might mess you up. So you just got to be very careful what you have on your social media. So it, it, with, even if I don't find you or I find you and, and can't even click into a picture, it, that that's actually, I think it's actually better in my point of view because you're, you're conscious of that. I can't speak for everyone. It's just like gaps. We, were, uh, we didn't talk about that very much, but gaps in your in your uh, resume. We had a couple of people we talked to that you know been with Nortel for 40 years or Raytheon for 30, and you know Nortel had their own um, programming language, it was proprietary. Mm -hmm. So you know they had to come out at 50 and um, learn a new language, or if they wanted to stay in the industry. I don't think that's a problem. I don't think school's a, gap, a problem if there's if gap was because of school or because of something like that. I mean, it, it always depends on the reason. I mean, if there's a gap, and you know, be transparent, is, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because if there's a gap because you tried to start your own business, that's okay too, I would think. I mean, it shows initiative. I mean, um, or if there's, a, you know, if there's a gap for health reasons, that's, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to say anything about the gap, as long as it was a legitimate uh, reason for the gap. And the main thing for me with, with in the interview is the communication piece, and I'll touch on that again because um, we have folks in our, in our company that we know we don't want them talking to anybody, you know? Um, and I can, I can say with a little bit of pride that none of them are in IT, which is kind of unusual. Because, no, I mean, it really is. Some people are scared to call the IT guys, you know. Um, and we do a lot of implementations with other companies, and, and, and a lot of them are great. A lot of them are not so great to work with, but you, you still have to work with them. But if, if, you can't, if, you can't talk, if you can't talk to a layman about the issue that, or the situation or the solution or the next step um, or the plan, um, you know, if you want to just, if you want to be punch, pushing out code eight hours a day, 40 hours a week for 30 years, that's okay. But if, but if you can communicate, it's it, more valuable. Yeah, it's a whole lot more valuable.